so one of the things you will need to do occasionally is identify when a substance is limiting or when it's in excess um, and you also have to have an idea of what the term limiting and excess actually mean so in the context of chemical reactions what's meant by the term excess so if one of your reactants is in excess basically what that means is that it is present in an amount in excess of what is required to react with all of the limiting reactant so the excess will be left over some of it will be left over because literally all of the limiting reactant has been completely used up so there's nothing left to react with the excess reactant and that's partly the purpose as to why we use one of the reactants in excess because if it's in excess that reactant will be used up that the, the, the excess reactant is used to basically ensure that the limiting reactant will be completely used up we would often do this in the context of say um, we would do this if we were making gases in a chemistry lesson for example so you would add say zinc to excess um, say hydrochloric acid to make sure that all of the zinc reacted to be able to produce as much hydrogen gas as possible um, and this has application for when we do rates of reaction as well so the thing that controls um, the reaction essentially is the limiting reactant it's going to control how much of the product we actually get if it's all used up literally there is none of it left to continue to react with the reactant that is in excess and therefore the reaction comes to a stop and again that would be something that you would identify in rate of reaction graphs as well now the skill that you have to be able to get here is to be able to work with um, equations to work out balanced equations to work out which one of the reactants is in excess and which one is limited and we'll take a look at a couple of examples of that now. So we have here um, which reactant is in excess of 24 grams of magnesium react with 100 grams of chlorine. So here's the magnesium and the chlorine and it is a 1 to 1 ratio. So the ratio is important here because when we work out the ratio of magnesium to chlorine we will see which one is in excess in relation to this one to one ratio so if we take the magnesium number of moles is the mass over the mr or the ar so um we have 24 grams of magnesium and um, divided by 24 so that is one mole of magnesium and if we look at the chlorine um is the mass over the MR and this time we have 100 grams of chlorine so it's 100 over 71 so we have 1.4 okay so what you can see now is that essentially what you have is that 1 to 1.4 ratio here when it should be a one-to-one -one ratio so we see here that it's not one-to-one -one because it's one to 1.41 and because in this reaction we were talking about um, the hydrogen sorry the magnesium to the chlorine we can see that the chlorine is in excess looking at the next one then we have a reactant so we have propane is reacting with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water which reactant is in excess in our reaction if we have 44 grams of propane reacting with 200 grams of oxygen so let's look at the, um, the ratio here it is a one to five ratio let's take our propane so the number of moles is the mass over the mr so we take our 44 and divide that by the 44 the 44 of the propane we have one mole now if we take our 200 grams so this is for the propane this side 
Now if we take a look at the same reaction now, this time for oxygen, so we have number moles is the mass over the MR. So we have 200 grams of oxygen. Um, the MR of oxygen is 32. So it's 200 divided by 32, which is 6.25. Now, you can see here that what we have now is at 1 to 6.25 and it should be a 1 to 5 ratio so we can see essentially here that the oxygen O2 is in excess. Looking at the next one and um, we have the reaction here between magnesium carbonates one mole is reacting with two moles so it's a one to two ratio which reactant is in excess of this reaction of 168 grams of magnesium carbonate so it's um, number of moles is the mass over the MR so we have 168 divided by 84 which we're getting from the other question two moles um, and then if we look at the um, the nitric acid so number of moles is the mass over the MR so we had 63 grams and that's got an MR of 63 so we have one mole of um, we have one mole of the acid here now in this equation it's um, a 1 to 2 ratio of MgCO3 to HNO3 but what we find from my calculation here is actually that it's 2 to 1 so this means that the magnesium carbonate was in excess So this would be a good example of where this ties in with chemical changes. So this would be a good example of where you use excess carbonate, for example, to make a salt and the insoluble carbonate could then be filtered, filtered off using a filter funnel on filter paper. And you collect the, um, the solute, so you collect the solution that would then contain, in this instance, a magnesium nitrate salt. And you could crystallize the magnesium nitrate to get access to the actual salt crystals. Moving on. Which reactant is in excess in a reaction of 2 grams of calcium reacting with 27 grams of water? So 1 mole is reacting with 2 moles. So if we start with the number of moles of calcium Two grams, and that's forty. Zero point zero two five. Zero point zero five um, moles. Okay, now it's reacting with the water. Um, Twenty seven grams of water, so the number of moles is the mass over the MR. So we have twenty seven over eighteen. Now you can see in this example that we have um, a reaction here that should be, sorry it's moving around a lot there, we have a reaction here which should be 1 to 2, but what we have is 0 0.05 to 1.5, so what we can see here clearly then is that the water, because this is the calculation for the water, this was the calculation for the calcium we can see that the water is in excess and that the um, calcium would be the limiting reactant here and you would see
So in this example, which react is reactant is in 13.8 grams of potassium carbonate reacting with 3.26, 3.65 grams of um, hydrochloric acid. So um, number of moles, mass over MR. And this is a one to two ratio. So um, we have 13, 0.8 grams of the magnesium, sorry, the potassium carbonate, and that's 138. So that looks like 0.1. Which it is 0.1 moles. And it's reacting with the hydrochloric acid. So the hydrochloric acid number of moles is 3.65 divided by 36.5 is again 0 0.1 moles. Now we have a reaction here where it is 1 to 2. So we have a 1 to 2, but instead what we have here is 0 0.1. 0 0.1. So in this context, um, there you can see here that the um, the hydrochloric acid here is the thing that is um, limiting, and that the potassium carbonate is excess. because it's a one to one ratio here. That should be one to two, and actually it's 0.1 to 0 0.1, so it's like a one to one ratio again. It's limiting, so basically this makes sense because in these kinds of reactions, you would expect all of the acid to be used up so that you can produce a salt and then you can filter off the excess um, pota potassium carbonate that hasn't reacted, so you get access to the potassium chloride um, crystals that would be left behind. Uh, number nine. So which reactant is in excess of six grams of magnesium reacts with 73 grams of hydrochloric acid. So we have our um, magnesium. So the number of moles is the mass over the MR. Uh, six grams divided by the 24. Zero point two five moles. Um, now, if we look at this, then for the hydrochloric acid component, HCl, number of moles is the mass over the MR. So we have seventy three grams of the acid divided by thirty six point five. moles. Now in this reaction what we should see is a, um, oops sorry, in this reaction what we're seeing up here is a 1 to 2 ratio. So to fully react it should be in a 1 to 2 ratio but what we actually have here is a 0 0.25 to 2 ratio. So essentially this shows then that the hydrochloric acid is in excess. Because that is in excess of a 1 to 2 ratio. It's a 0.25 to 2 ratio, not a 1 to 2 ratio. Therefore the acid is in excess. Um, and a few more. So which is in excess if we have 96 of methane reacting with 160 of oxygen. So we have our uh, number of moles is the mass over the MR. So we have our mass of methane which is 96 um, divided by 16. Which gives us 6 moles. If we look at, so this is the methane. 
So then if we um, look at the reaction with the oxygen, so, um, so here's the O2, it's the mass over the MR, so we have 160 over 32. is 5. So what we're getting here is a, and um, what we should have is a 1 to 2 ratio, but what we actually have is a 6 to 5 ratio. So 6 to 5. So um, from that point of view, So from that point of view, the methane is in excess. So next one then, calculate which reactant is in excess. If there is 4.4 grams of lead oxide reacting with 12 grams of hydrogen, so um, do an R number of moles again so 4.46 over 223 gives us 0.02 moles so this is for the PVO it's reacting with the hydrogen, so for the hydrogen, H2, number of moles is the mass over the MR. So we need 12 grams of hydrogen, hydrogen react. And, uh, so we have 6 moles. So we have a 0 0.02 to 6 mole um, ratio here, which should be a 1 to 1 ratio. You can see it's 1 to 1. So this is telling you then that the hydrogen is in excess. Calculate which reactant is in excess if there are 32 grams of sulfur dioxide reacting with 96 grams of oxygen. So here's our sulfur dioxide and our oxygen, so it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So number of moles is the mass over the MR. So this is for the sulfur dioxide. So we have 32 grams of sulfur dioxide. So that looks like half a mole. Which indeed it is. And for the oxygen, number of moles is 96 over 32 which is 3 moles so what we have is a 0 0.5 to 3 ratio and in reality this was a 2 to 1 ratio Um, so that's essentially the equivalent this ratio here is the equivalent of a 1 to 6 ratio um, which is different from a 2 to 1 so definitely here then the oxygen is in excess. Okay, so balancing of quid, sorry, finding the reactant that is limiting or in excess from the balanced equations and using your mole calculation. Plenty of examples of how you might be expected to use this. Again, this will be worth two or three more.
works in the paper one towards you towards the end of the paper. So um, using most of the equations will be next then.